Hi, I'm Alexandra Woodier Sharon. I'm the president and CEO of Empress Royalty. We offer investors a strategic approach to investing in gold and silver. Here are our forward looking statements. You should have a read of these, they're also available on our website. So, Empress Royalty, what is our business strategy? We create new royalties and or streams to get mines either into production or help them expand upon their production capacity and get great returns as a result. We have a globally diversified portfolio um, of a combination of royalties and streams that have the potential to generate significant revenue. We're currently generating revenue now and forecasting about $50 million of revenue over the next five years. We also have a very strong mining finance team. We've completed over $6 billion in mining finance transactions over 250 years of experience, which really allows us to uh, find these opportunities. So what are royalties and streams? Our royalties where we invest in a company and we receive a percentage of revenue, and a stream is where we invest in a company, we're able to buy gold or silver at a deeply discounted price. And at Empress, we do a combination of both. Here we're showing how the royalty companies outperform gold. The first one's looking at the gold miners ETF, the gold price, and the uh, royalty and streaming sector. The second one is looking at the life cycle of a royalty company. We're just in stage one, establishing our market presence. We believe with our strategy and how we're focused on revenue generation, we should be able to quickly accelerate to stage two, rapid growth. What are the benefits to an Empress shareholder? where you're getting the leverage to the gold and silver price, you're protected from inflation compared to typical mining companies, and also getting high returns by investing in Empress. Our portfolio IRR is about 30% right now. And you're also getting access to a globally diversified portfolio. We're in Mexico, Peru, and Mozambique at the moment. Uh, there's been a lot of new entrants to the royalty and streaming space over the last couple of years, and we really feel, especially in the junior side, there's sort of three types. There's the expiration generation, so early stage, inexpensive to acquire, uh, but there's no guarantee it will turn into a mine, and if it does, there's a long lead time to revenue generation. And then there's the other group, which is buying third-party royalties. Um, you know, with these guys, you don't have a direct relationship with the mining company, and it's become quite competitive, so you're part of a competing bid process and historically getting lower returns. At Empress, we're focused on the creation side, and we work directly with the mining company, so we know what's happening with the opportunities. We're able to negotiate that contract and make sure that the contracts we're doing work for the benefit of all. Um, our investment manager is Endeavor Financial. Is, is uh, mentioned I'm ex-Endeavor Financial. Um, they're also a large shareholder, and David Rhodes is the managing director, is our executive chairman. And what Endeavor was seeing, we were seeing the streaming companies were doing bigger and bigger investment sizes, and that no one's providing the streaming structure for sub $25 million and more than junior mining. And that's why we established and set up Empress. Um, you know, it also gives me access to their entire team of you know, financial analysts, mining engineers, geologists, to not only source opportunities, but be able to quickly vet them and then execute. How do we invest? So we look at it from five directions. The project stage, we're looking at production um, or development stage projects, both public and private. We are only looking at gold and silver, so we truly are a precious metals royalty and streaming company. And as I mentioned earlier, we're global. Our investment size is up to 25 million were mandated. The sweet spot for us in terms of our evolution of growth is about five to $10 million. And all of our investments have a strong ESG focus. Moving into the portfolio of what we currently have, uh, the first one is Sarah Antipite, which is a gold stream in Peru owned by a private group called Sierra Sun. We invested in them to help them expand their production, um, and we've been receiving revenue now for them from just over two years as they're ramping up. The other one we have is a silver stream on the Talaweta project in Durango, Mexico, owned by Luca Mining. This was a development asset when we first invested the $5 million, and they've now just hit 500 ton capacity um, in June, and they should be ramped up to full capacity, uh, production capacity by the end of this year, early next year. Um, and this is a good example of how we can get some great returns. Again, we invested $5 million. The annual cash flow, when they're fully ramped up, is about $3.3 million US, and the net asset value in that's about $20 million. Uh, the one in Mozambique is called Manica. Um, this was a royalty, and we structured that accordingly uh, for being in Mozambique. Uh, again, a private company, um, and we have a royalty on this one. Um, they got into production, uh, started getting production this time last year, and now they're fully ramped up, and we've been receiving that revenue as well. 
We have a development stage project called Pinos in Zacatecas, Mexico. Um, this one's early stage, but we, this should get quite interesting as this project advances. We also have an exploration portfolio, and we did this as part of our direct listing on the TSXV, which was almost three years ago. We're much more focused on revenue. So we are forecasting significant growth at Empress. We're looking between five to seven million dollars in revenue this year, depending on market prices or commodity prices, about ten million dollars next year, carrying on that's about fifty million in revenue if we did nothing else. Uh, so again, we've invested nineteen and a half million dollars into the portfolio. The net asset value of that is forty seven million dollars, projected revenue fifty, IRR thirty percent. When you look at Empress compared to our peers, we trade on a significant discount on all key matrix. If you just look at the price to cash flow, uh, the sector average for 2024 revenue is coming in about 18 times. If you even just half that for being in the junior side, we're forecasting 10 million next year. So there's a significant potential for a re-rate of Empress. And we're also looking to build the portfolio out and create more diversification. I have exclusivity on two transactions at the moment, both in Africa, uh, both are producers. So again, helping them expand production. And we're also looking at one right now in South America. So if the due diligence checks out and we get agreeable terms, we hope to bring further investments into the portfolio soon. When you look at the team, as I mentioned, David's from Endeavor, myself and Jeremy Bond from Terra Capital out of Australia. We're all on the investment committee, as well as Terra's a large shareholder. Uh, we have Natasha Kieran, a lawyer, Paul Mainwaring, who's based here in London, a CFA, and Wes Roberts, a mining engineer. Our team's small. It's myself and Caitlin, who's with me, who's on our uh, marketing side. And we've got Rich, who's our global VP for origination of transactions. Our capital structure, we've increased our shareholder base with some strong supporters this year. Uh, we've got, uh, as I mentioned, Terra, Endeavor Management and Board. We own 25% of the company. 35% uh, is held by uh, the likes of Rick Rule, Maria from Sprott and both of her funds, Frank Holmes through US Global, uh, recently Stefan Gleason just also invested into Empress. Uh, we have 118 million shares outstanding. Our market cap in Canadian is about $33 million. We currently have about $1 million in cash. That was our June financials. And we have a debt facility from Nabari, so we've got some about at least $10 million that we can put into further transactions to fund the deals we're looking at. Near-term catalyst for us is Sierra increasing its production, Talaweto getting into full production, Manica, again, is contributing further revenue, and then we've got a pipeline of opportunities that we're looking to bring into the company. So, invested $19.5 million, $19 million to date, forecast of revenue $50 million over the next five years, net asset value is $47 million, and our market cap is just $24 million U.S. Thank you very much.